Tonight on Haunted Homes, we meet the Outram family from Birmingham, whose life is gripped by fear. I'm scared shitless. I can't stay up there, Helen. I can't. It's like something's just getting on my head and it's crushing it. We send in a team of paranormal experts to investigate the ghostly goings on. Who's that? My heart's beating really hard. This is the source. Whatever's happening in this house is coming from here. But who or what will they discover? Something going on at home. There's no place like home. Except, of course, if you think yours is haunted. 49% of the population believe in the paranormal. But forget castles or stately piles. You don't have to live in a gothic mansion to have a ghost. 42% of Brits claim to have had personal encounters. Thousands of ordinary families all over the country are convinced they've had paranormal experiences in their own home. Hold tight, just now. Liz and Chris Outram have been together for 10 years. They have four children, Charlene 10, William 6, Christine 5, and three-year-old Christopher. And the guardians to Liz's 16-year-old niece, Kirsty. Two years ago, when they moved into their semi-detached house in Birmingham, they thought they'd found their perfect family home. Everything was fine. We did our, all our unpacking and everything, and nothing was out of the ordinary. And then about three weeks later, we started hearing light footsteps. A few weeks later, I was standing at the bottom of the stairs and I heard a young babe cry. It sounded like a newborn baby. So I went upstairs. No, my son was fast asleep in the carts. And then we heard, like, a dragging. Still nothing there. Unable to account for the odd noises, Liz began to suspect their new house was haunted. One day I was in the bathroom. I felt like somebody was staring at me. I kept turning around to see if there's something there, thinking it was a cat or something. And I turned around and I saw what I thought was a shadow. And it actually went through the attic door. Well, that was it. I dropped everything I was doing in the bathroom. And I went out the front door and I was sitting in the garden in tears when my husband came home. But Chris didn't take her fears seriously until one night a few weeks later, he heard footsteps on the hall stairs, and there was no one there. I was sort of not believing at first, but uh, now I'm beginning to think otherwise. So now I'm actually starting to believe that there are, there are some activity. But it's not just strange noises that have frightened the family. It can go cold one minute, hot the next. You can get pictures coming off walls. I've seen lights in here. It can be very uncomfortable for me in here. This is my niece's bedroom. Um, there is quite a lot of activity in this room. Um, toys on the chair will move, quilts pulled off. Um, in this room, the light turned on and off on its own quite a few times. I generally don't like being in here. Uh, you just see lights and you just hear a lot but there's nothing there. And when you're in the bath as well, you hear people knock on the door, you ask them what they want and there's nobody there and you can hear people outside the bathroom. But the one place in the house Liz is so scared of that she won't even set foot in is the attic. Footsteps, strange growling, bangs on the door and large objects being dragged have all been heard by the family. Liz is even terrified of walking past the doorway to the attic after it flew open and hit her in the face. It's become quite a strain on my marriage. If I have a bad night, as I call it, because I can feel the presence or I can hear the footsteps, I mean, he has to get up, he has to make me drinks, I won't come downstairs on my own, I won't go to the toilet at night on my own, he has to come in with me. He has to literally be there 24 7. We gave Liz and Chris a camcorder for a week in an attempt to capture some of the noises and moving objects they have been experiencing. I feel sick as I don't feel. I'm scared shitless. I've got a tightening in my stomach, like I've just been on a fair ride, yeah. 
Whilst they recorded no concrete evidence of any paranormal activity, they did capture some footage of unexplained moving lights. Some investigators believe such lights, known as orbs, represent spirit energies. Could these lights be proof that the Outrams are being haunted? I mean, all I want to know is who it is and what do they want? Because it's just getting too much now. I just want it over and done with it, and I just want whoever it is or whatever it is to go to where it should be. You know, and let us up. If they've had their life, can we have ours? To help them discover what's going on, we're sending in three very different experts. A psychic, a paranormal investigator, and a professor of paranormal psychology. The team are experienced to tackle any home believed to be haunted. Mia Dolan has been working as a professional psychic for over 15 years. Most of my heaviest experiences have been involved in ordinary homes with ordinary people. It doesn't matter the size or the price of your property. It is the land it is sitting on and the events that have gone on within that property. This is the first time she has seen Liz and Chris's house. She has no idea who lives here and has never met the family. Thank you for letting me come to your home. If it's all right for you, I'd like to be able to look around and judge for myself what's here. Because I don't want your energies interfering with whatever's in the rooms, if that's okay with you. Yeah, because fine. people think they just have a haunting. Yeah. But they come in many shapes and sizes. Right. So before we do anything, we better find out what we got. In each room, Mia claims she is able to get an understanding on how best to deal with the situation. This is really interesting. Definitely got the feeling of something coming up and down the corridor. It's like banging, maybe banging over on this court, on this door, or banging on a wall. And it's it's mischievous. It, it's it's definitely an adult. It's not a child. We've got activity here, so that's quite interesting for me. The family have all reported hearing footsteps and banging on numerous occasions in the hallway. I get a feeling I'm going to go up, but I'm not sure yet why. So. Anything that's happening is not centred in this hallway, but um, I am drawn to the bedrooms. It looks like the cat wants to get out. Mia is already picking up on what the family claim they've had to live with. This room's unhappy, even though it's a children's room, it's unhappy. And I'm sure the children would have said something's woken them up, they're hearing noises. It's not a very nice room for a children's room. It's a good job we're here. Each of the four children, plus Liz's niece, Kirsty, have all slept in this room over the past two years. All except three-year-old Christopher have reported being woken in the night. I don't think anyone could stay here a week without getting depressed. And I do feel sorry for the family, and I don't know how long they've been trying to get it sorted out, but this is not new. It's been going on for a long time. Mia has correctly identified that the Outrams have complained of this problem for over two years. For Liz and Chris, Mia's arrival is a mixed blessing. Well, it's getting to the stage where I don't think anybody believes us what's going on, to be honest, anybody that's been here. But I am worried that whatever is here could be stirred up and get worse. That's the only thing I'm worried about. While Mia is making her way around the house, something odd occurs. There's a noise up there. An alarm has suddenly started to go off in the attic. There's something going on at home. As the crew investigate, Liz and Chris are completely oblivious to the drama unfolding upstairs. Get the light on, Steve. Shh. Stop. Stop. Oh, that's weird. No one can explain what the alarm was or where it came from. And as Mia arrives in the attic, she senses a bad atmosphere in the room. This is where it's coming from. This is the source. Whatever's happening in this house, it's coming from here. And 
it, it doesn't feel nice. It's very rare to find anything evil on Earth, very rare. And I wouldn't say this is evil. Not yet, anyway. After her tour of the house, Mia tells the family what she's discovered. Liz's reaction to the news is completely unexpected. The actual problem is stemming from upstairs. That's where the center of it is. But it is in every room. I do think you've got a haunting. I do think we can sort it out. Mm -hmm. But Liz, it's been affecting you, your nerves. You've been depressed. And there's something from your childhood you're bringing through now. It was an old man who's now in spirit. No, I can't. I can't. <laughs> Sorry, darling. Sorry. 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 Listen, darling, I didn't mean to upset her, but if we can sort it out, then it'll be finished. I didn't know she could pick it up that quick. Good. Yeah. Okay. It's just a bit of a shock, because nobody's mentioned it for a long time. No, She said if you want to have a word to run around, you can. I just honestly didn't think it would pick it up that quick. Liz thinks Mia is talking about her dad, who died ten years ago and with whom she had a strained relationship. But Mia doesn't believe he's the ghost. She suspects it's something else preying on Liz's bad memories. Often people don't want to think backwards. They don't want to go into their past and relive things. So they put them in the back of their memory and forget about them. But it still has a way of clinging on. No, it's the fact that she picked up on that. I knew then she was, she's a fraud. Do you know what I mean? Mm. As soon as she says she's picked up on an old man, I thought, here we go, straight away. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Oh, I am so sorry to hit it long on you like that. I didn't mean to. No, don't worry. And it's um but it's just obvious. I know. I promise it's gonna be a lot better. I, I promise. So. Once the house gets cleared, we will clear it. I will not leave this house until it's cleared. And when it's cleared, it's like a fresh slate. And there'll be no more things that you can't speak about. It'll be fine. I so. The house will now be taken over by the experts for the next 48 hours. The aim of the first night is to witness and record any ghostly activity with the help of independent paranormal investigator David V and his assistant Mark Webb. David runs an organization which investigates reported haunted homes. During his investigations, David claims to have witnessed some unbelievable ghost hauntings. Over the course of 30 years that I've been investigating, I've probably got um, 100 photographs with genuine ghostly phenomenon caught on film. David and Mark will set up audio-visual equipment in the exact locations where the Outrams say they've experienced the most paranormal phenomena in an attempt to capture it on film. This is where we get a lot of the activity. Um, I normally have all the lights on when we're here. The light's gone again. That was a new bulb last night. I am getting a reading of uh, one Midigors which is quite interesting, but that could be natural. could be electricity. That's why. The equipment the investigators are using looks for disruptions in electromagnetic fields. They believe high EMF readings are indicative of spirit activity, but these readings could also be caused by faulty electrics or proximity to power lines. Mir thinks the attic is the center of the paranormal activity. Liz has been too terrified to set foot in it since the locked door flew open and smashed into her face. To aid the investigation, she's determined to try and overcome her fear. But just two steps in is too much for Liz. I can't stop with that, Helen. I can't. Just as Liz feels overcome by feelings of dread and has to leave the attic, David's meter readings suddenly peak and he thinks he catches sight of movement out of the corner of his eye. I'm very definite that something moved in this room. Something made a noise. Something slid across the floor. I went into the attic because I wanted to beat my fear. Mm. And I just felt so sick. Sick headache. 
Yeah. Mm. It's like something's just getting on my head and it's crushing it. Mm. This is staying exactly the same strength all the time. And it's, it's quite odd. I've never seen it do this before. It's like I was being pushed against the wall, cos Mark, Mark went past I me. I was at the far end. Uh, no, I was standing on the stairs and... I am concerned about this I meter reading. I've never seen yeah, anything yeah. like this before, ever. Now, something did move up here. I'm very, very sure of that. Only by knowing how bad it feels can you see how good it feels when you pick up there. I hope so, I really do. I can't go on living like this. So I think the sooner we actually implement some of those scientific um, experiments, the better. Coming next, unbelievable temperature changes in the attic. That is bizarre. 27.1 degrees centigrade, and it is absolutely freezing in this room. Strange goings on in the kids' bedroom. I could definitely see shadows against the blue. No way. Uh, honestly. And fear spreads through the crew. My heart's beating really hard. Oh, Who's that? that? Go to one pound, go to McDonald's, buy a 99p curry chicken sandwich and keep the change. Play the penny falls, get lucky, discover an unknown artist, a sell for double, and put it in the stock market. Buy a low, sell high, keep costs down, production up, sell to the Americans and move to Hawaii. Buy a 99p curry chicken sandwich mm, and move to Hawaii. McDonald's pound saver menu. pa -da pa 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 I'm loving it. This one gets my full attention. Think chocolate. Think savour everyone. Think galaxy minstrels. Can you feel a migraine coming on? Well, now there's Cool and Soothe Migraine Sheets. The special gel provides immediate cooling relief and lasts up to six hours. Now, doesn't that feel better? Cool and Soothe Migraine Instant Cooling Relief, also for kids. Computers for schools. Collect vouchers for your local school when you spend a tenner at Tesco. So really, it's computers for scones. Computers for scotch eggs. And even computers for scouring pads. Tesco. Every little helps. You can click porcelain tiles together. Lay a revolutionary new floor. Without making any mess, all in no time at all. B&Q lets you do more than ever for less than you thought possible. Exclusive new edge flooring from B&Q. Hello? What are you doing tonight? Just gonna go home, watch the footy on the telly. What about you? Uh, yeah, I'm... He's snowed under, mate, actually. So, uh, yeah, I won't be home till much, much later. All right, see you later, mate. Bye. Designers at Debenham was photographed by Frederick Auerbach. Rocher, John Rocher. Red Herring. J Jeans by Jasper Conran. Rager by Janet Rager. Debenham's Styling the Nation. In the kitchen, he was the boss, but now... Listen to the governor. Al Murray's the landlord. F is for food, mate. What's your mouth at, you filthy... <laughs> we the British are like sensible, normal, down-earth people. <laughs> An 
an audience with Al Murray, Saturday, 9.15, ITV1. Two years ago, the Outram family moved into their semi-detached house in the centre of Birmingham and thought it was the ideal family home. But within weeks, their life had become a living nightmare. Liz and Chris believe their house is haunted. We've sent in psychic Mia Dolan and ghost investigators David V and Mark Webb to try and help. Using a series of scientific experiments, David and Mark will monitor any suspected paranormal activity. OK, what we're going to do now is we're going to set up a pair of infrared motion detectors. Basically, we put the two... so the two beams meet each other, and if anything breaks that beam, it will set off an alarm. Like so. OK. The family have reported toys moving in the bedrooms, so the investigators are setting up trigger objects and using cameras to capture any movement. With their tracking equipment in place, Professor of Paranormal Psychology Chris French arrives. He's a sceptic and will always look for the rational explanation for things that go bump in the night. I don't think that anybody that's looked into these kinds of issues seriously doubts that people have had weird experiences. Where the disagreement comes is how you interpret those experiences. Tonight's investigation will begin at midnight, and disturbed by the goings-on in the house, Mia asks the Outrams to leave. Whilst one of the investigators, David, makes final equipment checks, he believes he's witnessed something weird in the children's bedroom. I was standing here observing this area when all of a sudden a little child's toy flew from this doll's house, hit this infrared sensor beam and fell right smack in the middle of the floor. And as you can see, it was just laying there, um, which is quite amazing. No one threw that. There's no one inside this room. David believes the toy was thrown in a straight line to land directly in the sensor beam. He thinks this strongly suggests the Outrams have been living with a poltergeist. Before the investigation gets underway, skeptic Chris French records the temperature of each room. So far, everything's very stable. Paranormal enthusiasts believe a sudden temperature change is a sign of ghostly activity. 24.4 degrees centigrade. As the clock strikes midnight, the film crew join the experts and base themselves in the bedrooms, the hallway and the attic, aiming to record any unusual occurrences. Keeping the camera rolling is obviously crucial to the experiment. Each hour they will rotate positions. The aim of tonight is to discover what lies behind the Outram's experiences. Mir believes it's the ghost of an old man, unconnected to the family. In my um, work as a clearer specialist, I've been doing it, say, about 17 years. And in all those years, only three times have I felt something as heavy as this. According to ghost hunters, spirits are most active during the hours of 12 to 3 a.m. The team, positioned at points around the house, wait for the unexpected to surprise them. For the first hour and a half, nothing extraordinary happens. Then two crew members sat in the attic begin to experience strange sensations. My heart's beating really hard. Like there's a pressure drop. Do you feel that? Hmm. There's a pressure drop in Can you feel it in your ears? Yeah. Hmm, it's weird that, isn't it? It is. It's like... It's like being in an aeroplane. I know. I've seen this before. It's like it's like a pressure drop out your ears. Hmm. I can feel it in my arms. Legs. You know when you take off and they feel yeah. slightly constricted? It's really weird. It's like, like, this, like a 
nearly 30 years. There doesn't appear to be a logical explanation as to why their ears popped simultaneously. It's not a symptom typically associated with panic or feelings of anxiety. Skeptic Chris French is on hand throughout the night to evaluate any occurrence. I don't know. I'm, I'm really interested. They said that they could be picking up all kinds of uh, variations in the EMF. Right. You know, and it might be that that could actually cause some kind of subjective sensation as well. Right. Mm. And it's interesting that you both felt it at the same time. Yeah, it was yeah. actually, yeah. yeah. I've been... It's 2.20 a.m. One of the investigators has noticed something ominous happening in the attic. It's a little bit cold up here. There's a drop in temperature. But that's quite interesting. The temperature has actually risen. It's 24.7 degrees centigrade. 24.8. Uh, 24.925 degrees centigrade. That's quite a significant jump. 25.1. So although it's very, very cold in here, the temperature is actually rising. 25.3. Point 0.4. Extraordinary. It is very normal to get temperature changes in haunted houses. Spirit are energy, and when their energy comes near you, it's like static, and that static can make things colder or hotter. The speed of the changes is actually a sign that it is more paranormal than normal, because normal changes are gradual. That is bizarre. 27.1 degrees centigrade, and it is absolutely freezing in this room. And it's still rising. It's now actually stopped at 30.5 degrees centigrade. That's an incredible six degrees increase in under two minutes. I'd like to make, be sure that the equipment's actually working properly for a start. And we'd also need to know just how often do those kind of fluctuations that they've reported happen in supposedly non-haunted locations. It's falling, it's it? falling quite rapidly now. It's so it's hotter in here. It is hotter in here, isn't it? Very odd indeed. Where's the sensor though? It's not too sensor. close to your body. No, no, the, here's the sensor here. But just floating there. It's just floating here, so it's nowhere near my hands. Is this temperature change a sign that an apparition could be forming? everyone is sitting waiting, the executive producer thinks she's seen something in one of the children's bedrooms. First. Oh, I can see shadows. What's the matter? I can see shadows, like, moving against the blue, I think. I could, I could, I could definitely see shadows against the blue. No way. Uh, honestly. Who's the shadows? Yeah. What sort of shadows? Sort of shadow? Just like about so high up. Mm. That's creepy. Because there's definitely no one in there. And I'm not tired. But, but the infrared's in there, it hasn't gone off. Yeah, that's a bit Honestly, relaxed. I'm not making it up. I didn't see it. And you thought we were that's in there? That's freaky. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, come on. <laughs> no, which room were you in? The assistant producer and director investigate. Come on, up here. <laughs> if there was something there, it's now gone. It's 20 to 4 in the morning, and Mark discovers a possible explanation for the shadow seen in the children's bedroom. But it's not as straightforward as it seems. There was a teddy bear sat on this exercise bike. There was, this one was on the floor down here as it is. Uh, if I move this one, because this one we don't believe's moved, this teddy bear was sat on this exercise bike, just like that. As you can see, it's not really going to move. I mean, even, and I'm quite a heavy chap, that teddy bear has not moved a centimetre. 
This teddy bear is now led here on the floor. Unfortunately, we had no camera locked off in here. If we had it done, I think we would have uh, seen some sort of activity moving that teddy bear. Dan. <laughs> The booby trap cameras have been running for over four hours when two of the crew independently report seeing something out of the corner of their eye. Who's that? I just saw something. I just saw something out of the corner Both of my eye going something. under like that, that. And I was standing here, Stephen was, was sat there, and talking. he saw the same thing. It was out of the corner of my eye. Now, I don't know if it's just that eyes playing tricks on us or what, but I see we both, I did see some, some movement, some under movement there. there. And, and I said, and I just saw it in my eye, he said the same, I we mean, didn't feed each other, did Did anybody we? have torches on or anything like this? No. Like, any light no. sources at all? No. no. Apart from that light. Apart from that light. You know, it might have been, for example, yeah. plucking something out of the air. I mean, it might have been a car going past and headlights, you know. Yeah, you, but you, it looked like it was under that. But I mean, it might have just produced that kind of, you know, if, if, yeah. the, if the light was right. running across yeah, it. Yeah, fair enough. As, as a, as, you know, could, that could no be. No idea. I mean, I, yeah, that's not, you know, I'm not saying for one minute that's anything like a definitive explanation, but something like that, where you're not mm -hmm. paying attention to what the, the cause is mm -hmm. of the well, light or the source. Exactly. As day breaks, the investigation ends. Whilst the team didn't record any evidence of hauntings on camera, everyone felt and witnessed strange sensations during the night, including severe temperature changes, shadow sightings, and unusual pressure drops in the attic, none of which can be explained absolutely. It's night two of the 48-hour investigation. At midnight, Mia will perform her clearing ceremony and attempt to banish what she believes to be the ghostly presence for good. Chris and Liz return home to hear our experts' theories about what they've been experiencing. This is the first time they've been in the house since the investigation began. You ready to go? Yeah, I'm ready, I think. Ready? Well, Liz and Chris, as you know, we took over your house last night. Lots of people experienced different things. I, some felt sick, some felt hot, some felt cold. We have different things going on. It was very interesting, to say the least. It was amazing from a scientific point of view. We had some amazing uh, EMF meter readings. Um, quite unheard of at that level within a house of this size. Um, normally, we would associate that with man-made electrical um, emissions but very, very rare for something like this. I guess I should come in at that point, because as the sceptic here, you know, mm -hmm. I wasn't at all convinced last night that anything paranormal was going on. We had people getting very excited over what seemed to me to be often things that didn't merit that degree of excitement. I think what we're all agreed on is there's something going on. What we're not agreed on is what it is. What it is, absolutely. Coming up, Mia performs the clearing. <laughs> And Liz gets a bit too close for comfort. How did you feel when I said to you that it's coming down here? Just feel it. Yeah, because it's right by you. <laughs> I didn't want to freak you out. At b &Q, this stylish walk-in shower enclosure is just £399. That's something to sing about.
bars delight. Two bars of deliciously surprising crispy rippled wafer, together with melt in the mouth caramel and chocolate creams, all covered in milk chocolate. Whilst you're enjoying the first bar, you'd better watch the second, or you might get a different kind of surprise. Mars Delight. Surprisingly crispy. Deliciously smooth. Your favourite Roald Dahl characters brought to life in issue one of the magical world of Roald Dahl, out now, including cards and charm. Indulge in catwalk chic at the bridges this Easter. Indulge in must-have gifts for all the family. Indulge in delicious foods for you and fabulous activities for them. Then indulge in a little quality time with friends. The Bridges Sunderland. Indulge yourself. Three great cars, one great price at Reg Vardy. Choose from a 54 Reg Fiat Punto Active, an 04 Reg Renault Clio Authentic, or an 04 Reg Nissan Micra E from only 4999. That's three great cars from an incredible 4999. Great cars, great prices right now at Reg Vardy. My sport pushes me to the limits. Great for my body, tough on my hair. The answer? New Alberto VO5 Silky Smooth Shampoo and Conditioner with five vitamins. Our best ever formula deeply nourishes hair to leave it not once, but up to twice as shiny. If VO5 can make my hair this shiny, imagine what it can do for you. VO5. Whatever you do, and whoever you are, shine. And for great results with ceramic straighteners, try new VO5 Miracle Mist. Vodafone Live comes with 3G. Video calling can bring you together. This is Des. And this is Benny. Des has something Benny needs. I just cut off the side of Watford. Benny has something Des wants. I don't mind giving up three years of my life for a million quid. David Jason, Diamond Geezer. A drama premiere Sunday at 9, ITV1. For the last two years, the Outram family have been living at the mercy of the unusual activity in their home. Tonight, Mia will perform what she calls a clearing ceremony. But she believes it's not without risk. It's only when it really doesn't want to go, you've got problems, and it's a battle of wills. It's a battle of not losing concentration, believing in yourself, and never, ever getting scared. Mir believes the attic is the heart of the spirit activity. This is where the clearing will take place, and it's the first time Liz has been up there for six months. I'm looking forward to trying and getting rid of whatever it is, but I'm nervous of what we'll possibly see tonight or what we're here. Hi, come on in. Don't be intimidated by the candles. There's a good reason for it. When you're dealing with spirit, that any energy can interrupt them. Electricity is the same sort of thing. So we try to minimise as much electricity as possible. Mia is about to attempt communication with the spirit and identify why it's been haunting the Outram family. It is a guy, it's a man, it's an older man, but it's not to do with the family, OK? And this man has been associated with this area for a long time. Now, it's negative, but it's not evil. Now, this man, when he was alive, was in charge. He was in charge of people. That was his job. And for some reason, he wouldn't leave it when he left. And so, while he's stuck here, he's been trying to order people about or get them to be noticed, get them to do what he wants them to do. But it's not any particular person he's after. But you are very sensitive, Liz, and so it's, you've been feeling it stronger. This is interesting, because now I'm opened up fully. I'm seeing children's stuff being moved, like children's toys being moved, and drawings on the wall that there's been arguments about, 
and it's sorry, okay? Sorry about that. Nobody believed anybody here. Okay, I'm going to start clearing. What I'm doing now is I'm opening wide up and pulling it into the room. And now my guide, Eric's here, and this is very bizarre for you to understand, but my guide takes the person over. I act as an actual anchor for it. Okay, it's, I've got it in the room. The, the spirit of the man is over here and now starting to walk as if the candles aren't here, starting to move towards this side where Eric is. How did you feel when I said to you that it was coming down here? I could feel it. Yeah, because it's right by you. <laughs> I didn't want to freak you out. That's why my hands stuck to my face. I could feel it so it passed. <sighs> what was he yeah. saying about the children's toys? The worst children's toys in the attic. They've been moved. And what about the drawing on the wall? <laughs> when my sister's kids were living here, um, they kept blaming each other for the drawing on the wall. And the, there was arguments, there was fights over it. It was oh, in the children's really bedroom. Yeah. We had to paint over it, didn't we? Yeah. How are you feeling? Relieved. It, it sounds like I don't feel that uncomfortable in here now. No, it's, it's changed. Yeah. It, it yeah. takes a couple of minutes as it changes over. But the, it, to me, it feels softer in here. The headache's going as well. <laughs> Finished. It's over. It's going to take me a bit of time to get used to. With the clearing over, Mia hopes the family can now move forward with their lives. No presents left in their house. And as long as they don't, shall we say, frighten each other, <laughs> they'll be fine now. For sceptic Chris French, there never was a presence in the house. I've seen nothing, I've heard nothing, and none of the things that have happened to anybody have struck me as being so impressive that you think, my God, maybe there really is a ghost here. But the paranormal investigators disagree. There have been a few activities in the house which can be scientifically explained, but there's also been a few which I don't personally feel can have been attributed to science or natural occurrence. There, there's, I would suggest that there is something in this house. With each of our experts coming to a different conclusion, we return to the Outram family home two weeks later to see if their strange occurrences have gone. I didn't know what I was going to feel and that night that she did the clearing I could actually feel the spirit pass me on my hand and I thought no I'm not frightened anymore I know it's gone but it's such a change the house is so uplifting now it's a happier place to be and they've reported no more unexplained noises haunting them day and night I don't know what we was expecting to happen, but when we walked in the house after coming back after the night that Mia had been, everybody just totally realised the atmosphere of the house was so calm and everything, even friends that had been around noticed it. I was, I was relieved. Relieved it's over and done with. I got my wife back. I think now the nightmare's over, we can start rebuilding our lives and getting on to what we should be, a normal family. What movie are I from? <laughs> this program is in memory of Chris Outram, who died after the program was completed. Up next, more nerve-wracking TV with the world's scariest ghosts caught on camera.